We want to welcome everybody today to the call to our um, live broker call. Uh, before we begin, I just want to point out that you can submit questions during the talk. Uh, there's a chat with everyone button on the lower right hand side of the screen and um, it will answer them as it goes along or by the end of the presentation. Um, and just a side note that we're going to record this call so that we can send it out to any clients who may not have been able to attend today. Um, but I'll also send a link to the recording to you all so that you can refer back to the information um, whenever you want. Um, so now let me introduce our speaker today, Mitty Rawl, who many of you know already is our business development director who works specifically with our brokers. And he's going to walk through recent updates to our DSCR loan program and how you can best position your clients to qualify. So, Mitty. Yeah, thanks for introducing me, Debbie, and, and I appreciate you starting off the call. And uh, like Debbie said, the call will be recorded. So if you miss anything uh, that we talk about here with the call, I'll be happy to send you over a recording. Also going to have a question and answer period or more of a discussion period at the end. I want to emphasize that you have, if you have any questions or concerns about the product, um, the process, pricing, any of the changes that we've had with this, happy to help and see what we can run through. If you don't have my contact information, my email is midi at gonavcap.com. It's also going to be on the last slide, um, but my phone number is 443-228-8182. I just want to emphasize it's an open door. I am happy to help, happy to see how we can work together. And uh, I just really want to emphasize, feel free to reach out. With that being said, we're going to move to the topics of our call today. Got a few things we're going to talk about. First, we're going to talk about the DSCR product in general and the guidelines that we have currently, what products or what properties qualify, what products we have to offer, what the borrowers uh, need to have, whether that's experience, credit, uh, the debt service coverage ratio. Also going to look at the current offerings for max loan value, how we really determine a loan value or the max value that we can get leverage wise. And we're also going to talk about some of the changes to the product that we have. This product has been just frankly over the last two, two and a half years, it, has, it feels like it's almost tightened every day um, or every month, every time we close a deal. Um, but recently we've had some changes. We've opened up this product and we can open it up to more borrowers and make our borrowers who qualify, qualify for more loan, more in loan amount or an interest only option so we can make them um, help them achieve what they're looking for um, in their loans, especially the long term placement loans. We're going to talk about pricing and, and what really the pricing is based on. Also, how you can access current term sheets, uh, how to submit those or, or just uh, talking about the files in general. Also going to talk about submitting a file with us here at Navigator. How does that happen? Um, how do you collect documents and submit them? How do we get title ordered? Who orders an appraisal, et cetera? That's really going to be with the submission and the process slides. And then lastly, like I mentioned and Debbie mentioned, uh, we're going to have a question and answer period. Just talk about the product. Any scenarios that you have, you're welcome to bring up and see what we can run through. So just briefly talking about the DSCR product in general, it, it's a long-term product. It's meant for our borrowers' rental properties. So whether they're looking to acquire rentals to their portfolios or they're looking to refinance properties that they already have or that they acquired and they renovated, that's what this is really geared for. It is a residential product, and uh, I'm sure that you're well aware of what DSCR means, but if you don't, I, I frankly didn't know what it meant for a while. It means debt service coverage ratio. So in layman's terms, really what we're looking at is the mortgage payment, taxes, and insurance being covered by the rental income monthly. So another way to look at it, if you're rental income is a thousand dollars just on a very basic scenario and your mortgage payment taxes and insurance is a thousand dollars you would be at a one-to-one -one ratio if your rent was at eleven hundred dollars to a mortgage payment of a thousand dollars it's a one-to-one and so on 
If it's at $900, you're not at a one-to-one, -one, you're at a point nine. So we can get more in depth in that, but that's just, just how you look at DSER. This product has a 30 year fixed option. It has 10 one interest only options. We have a five and seven year arm, but to be just, you know, the difference in a five year arm and a 30 year fixed or a 10 year interest only arm, there's, there's not much benefit to having a five one arm at the moment. Just so you know, and you can communicate to your clients, maybe some of which who are more used to um, doing conventional notes, these notes typically have a prepayment penalty. So that's something to keep in mind. If they want to limit their prepay penalty to, let's say, two years, we can do that. And we have options for that with this product. But generally, the the large majority of the files that we get in have prepay penalties of three to five years. The main reasoning for that is, is really the pricing. When you get below a two year prepayment penalty, it can affect your pricing. And with everybody being aware of how much rates have risen, this product has really been affected by those rates because you still have to qualify with the DSCR. So, uh, but we can talk through those scenarios and it's a different rabbit hole that we can get to. Current DSCR guidelines, just as an overview, this is a product meant for residential one to four units and five to eight units. For the one to four unit specific, this we can work with um, purchase contracts, excuse me, purchase transactions, cash out transactions, and rate and term refinance transactions. If you have a borrower who's looking for long term placing, placement on a five to eight unit deal, the only thing that we have currently available is a purchase transaction or purchase note. So if they're looking to refinance that, we can look at short term options, maybe a bridge. If it needs renovation, we can look at that. Um, but that's that's where that is for five to eight. These are designed for urban and suburban properties. You know, there's really a gray line between what's suburban and what's rural and a lot of our deals that we get to break it down as plainly as possible. The appraisal is really gonna determine whether the property is urban, suburban, or rural. We can work with urban or suburban, but if the appraisal classifies the property as rural, then we would have to submit for an exception. And really we would talk through that and see how we feel about um, property moving forward. Is it strong on its other fronts with the borrower experience, cash on hand, um, other aspects of the deal. One thing I want to let you know, whether the borrower is looking to um, have this property held as a long-term rental property or a short-term rental property, we offer both options. They're not limited to just long-term rentals. So that's a nice uh, that's a nice feature of this. We can work with leased and unleased properties. So if they want to refinance a property that is unleased, they will be subject to a slight LTV reduction, but we can get them a cash out or rate and term refinance completed. Just so I make myself um, give my two cents on that, you, you always want to have your borrowers look to get the properties leased because we can get them more loan to value. And let's say if you get an appraisal and a rent schedule comes in, they don't have a lease in hand, they don't really have anything to... Um, to help with maybe looking at reassessing the rent schedule or asking the appraiser, the AMC to reassess the rent schedule. Minimum property values for this is 80,000. Uh, the minimum loan amount that we have is 56 for a long-term rental. When we're looking at our borrowers qualifying for these notes, the first thing that we look at is do have they owned any properties in the last 36 months? Okay. And by that, I mean in investment properties, sorry. Um, if they don't own any investment properties, next question we're going to have is do they own their primary residence? If they don't, they don't qualify for long-term DSR rental. If they do own their primary, they do qualify. We will work, excuse me, we will work with first time investors for this product. Second thing we look at is the borrower's credit score. This is going to be the main driving factor for their leverage. 
the minimum credit score to get in the door now is a 620. Uh, you know, really to get to better leverage, you would look at getting in the door 620, then you go to a 660, you open up the door for a lot of options. Uh, highest leverage you're probably going to see at 680 and then best rate best terms are going to be seen at 700 plus 720 plus second driving factor that we're going to look at is the borrower's debt service coverage ratio so if the borrower can qualify for an 80 percent loan with their credit score but their rental income can only service a 75 percent leverage loan that's what their borrower is going to be able to qualify for. It's going to be the 75%. The minimum DSCR we have currently is at a one-to-one -one ratio. So uh, we talked about that, qualifying for a one-to-one. Uh, -one. If you have any questions on what the borrower's DSCR may be, I would ask when you're talking to your borrower, let's gather the taxes, the annual taxes that they had for their the prior year, and an estimation for their insurance, uh, annual insurance. With that, you and I can look at the debt service coverage ratio and we can see if they qualify. Second thing we're gonna look at uh, with their primary residence is that they have a clean pay history on that. The max delinquencies that a borrower can have is one by 30 in the last 12 months. Now, typically we would see this on the borrower's credit report in some few and far between cases, maybe the borrowers don't have their loan, their primary loan um, being reported on their primary, or they don't have a loan on their primary. In the case that they don't have a loan on their primary, um, it's really a non-issue, right? But if they have a, a note on their primary that is not reporting to the credit bureaus, we would ask for a verification of mortgage. Reason why I bring it up is I just don't want your borrowers to be caught off guard. You know, I'm getting a rental loan. Why are we looking at our pay history of, of my primary? That's just where the guidelines have gone over the last year, year and a half. Another thing we look at is we run background on our borrowers. Uh, they can't have any open liens or judgments. If they have a smaller open lien or judgment against them and they're looking to do a cash out transaction, we can satisfy that with the cash out proceeds. Uh, another thing we look at is prior convictions on financial crimes, especially recently within the last 10 years. That um, is going to make the borrowers not be eligible for the product, unfortunately. Moving over to the leverage part of this product, like we talked about, the, the main driver for that is going to be their credit score and what bucket they fill in. Second is can their DSCR support the leverage that they qualify for? The max purchase leverage and the max rate and term leverage that we have is 80% right now. The max cash out refi leverage is at 75%. You know, we're looking at the valuation to, excuse me, let me backtrack. To determine what we're going to lend on, the value that we're going to lend on. We're either going to lend on in a purchase, the lower of a purchase contract or their agreed purchase price or an appraised value with supporting comps to support that value. In regards to a refinance, whether that's rate and term or cash out, we're going to look at the appraised value and the rent schedule as well. We're going to look at the rent schedule with a purchase um, as well. It's going to be a 1007 with a rent schedule. So unleased properties, like I talked about, if they're looking to refinance and they have an unleased property, if they qualify for an 80% rate and term and the property is unleased, we will have a max leverage of 75%. Typically for these notes, the DSCR or the debt service coverage ratio is going to be based on a full PITI payment. Taxes and insurance are typically escrowed with this. If the borrower does not want to have the taxes and insurance escrowed, but we can accommodate that. It's an exception. Um, there are a few and far between, but um, we can take a look at that. They'd still have to qualify on a full PITI payment. I want to move over to some of the changes to the guidelines that we've had recently. Up until this month, we had a qualifying credit score of 660 or above. We've dropped that 40 points, so it opens it up to a much larger range of our borrowers. 
you know, especially in the last year, year and a half, where we've seen some of our borrowers' credit scores maybe struggle to stay up above a 680 or up above a 660, um, we can help them out, especially on refinances, cash out, et cetera. Now we can look at qualifying a DSCR um, calculation on an ITI payment. The borrower needs a 660 score to be able to qualify for this option. But especially as we've all seen with rates rising, with the exception of today and maybe in the second half of next year, um, the DSCR has gotten tighter for deals really above $200,000, especially when we're creeping into the 7, 8, 9% range. Another change that we have is on a leased property for a refinance. If you get a valuation, let's say you have the property leased for $2,400 and you estimate the property's value to be at $250, right? Just for an easy scenario. You get the valuation back, the valuation comes back at $250, but the rent schedule comes back at $2,000. Typically, prior or in prior circumstances, we would have to use the $2,000 for the DSER calculation. Maybe you could apply for an exception if you had clean pay history and you had payment history on the um, property from the renters. Maybe you could get up to five or 10%. Now we can gross this up 20% if they can show evidence that they are getting rent in the amount. So if they can show that they are getting payments at $2,400, we can bypass the rent schedule and we can gross up the lease to 2,400 because it's 20. 20% jump from 2000 to 2400. That is especially going to help um, with qualifying for higher leverage amounts. That's 75, 80% amount. Also, as, as many of you know, or we've talked about, or if you don't know, uh, we mainly lend to business entities. The DSER product can actually lend to people in their personal name, and that option is available. But the large majority of our borrowers are investors, and many of them use um, the protections of an LLC or an S Corp for their properties and holding their properties. With the new updates that we have, anybody who is over 20% owner and is a guarantor on the loan, we can use the highest score of the guarantors or the members. Also, if the borrower is tight on cash, in a cash out transaction, typically they have to show at least a minimum of three months of reserves for this product. Now we can use the cash out proceeds again, excuse me, as reserves. Keep in mind, borrower is gonna need a 660 score for this to work, just like the um, qualifying on an interest only option, uh, but it is very helpful when they're tight on cash on a cash out. Another update that is not opening up the product, but just I want you to be aware of is for loans under $150,000, in some cases, or in most cases, the DSCR is going to have to be over 1.25. So I would emphasize if we have a smaller loan amount and you're worried about, hey, the taxes are a little bit high for a property of this size um, or the insurance, et cetera. Just give me a call. I'm happy to price out the SCR. And then, you know, if it's capping our loan amount, then we can bring it down and see what the borrower can actually qualify for. We'd love to get that out of the way, then give our borrowers an approval and then come back to the approval and say, hey, look, um, actually, you need a different qualifying um, ratio. So we're going to have to bring your loan amount down. Moving over to accessing rates, accessing terms with us here at NAVCAP. I just want to let everybody know that the long-term rental rates, these DSCR rates, follow the 10-year bond yield. Good news for us is that the 10-year bond yield is down below 4% today with the Fed's announcement yesterday. The rates will change daily based on the bond yield. Uh, as mentioned before, I want to emphasize that we can always directly, whether it's email or phone call, price out your deal, see what they qualify for. We can look at different scenarios that they have, whether it's a short prepay, an interest only option, a combination of the two, difference in, I want to look at a 75% cash out as opposed to a 65% cash out, et cetera, et cetera. We can price these loans out a hundred different ways. If you would like a full term sheet that you can send to your borrowers, 
I would ask that you go to your account on our website and you fill out a pre-loan application. At that point, I'm going to give you a call to see and discuss what the borrowers are looking for in particular. And then we're going to price those out and I'll send you over approval based on the numbers that I have. One update that we have with us here at Navigator and just our experience with our brokers and our process is that all the term sheets that we're going to send out now and moving forward are going to have a downloadable PDF option. So if you were working with us prior, we would send you an email as titled conditional approval, but it would not have our letterhead and you would have to forward over the email. Um, we are going to now send out an edible, excuse me, a PDF format of the term sheet. It's also going to give them a checklist of what they're going to need to gather for this file. That goes across all of our formats. So it will be a long-term rental PDF will be different than a new construction PDF, which will be different than a um, bridge or a buy and hold, et cetera. Like I mentioned, the term sheets are going to be sent directly to your email. And, you know, as far as rates are concerned, we can talk about them, but they really change daily on one of the products that we have long term. They change monthly, really. So uh, we'll keep you updated on those changes and happy to provide terms on any deals that you got. As far as our lending process is concerned and what you should expect when working with us and, and looking to submit files from start to finish. I would say generally these files take about three weeks, lock, stock, and barrel between title, appraisal, underwriting, processing, and getting your files to closing. I will always throw this in there if there's a title issue or if the borrower wants to take a pause or if there's a reason why this loan gets paused within that time frame, then expect that to add on to your time. But one of the benefits in working with us as opposed to a larger um, more corporate style lender in our sphere is that we're going to be able to get these loans done um, as fast as you push them along, as fast as the borrowers can supply the documentation. You're not going to be sent to uh, three or four sets of underwriters or a funding approval board, or you shouldn't be waiting for conditional lists for a week, etc. We will be in contact with you from start to finish and you should always uh, be made available to your NAVCAP representative. So when you're looking to move a file forward, you would want to submit a full loan application. You can access this link in your broker account, in your member account on our website. You can also access this link in the applications, the term sheets that we sent over for your pre-loan application. Once I get a full loan application in, the ball is in my court to send you over a borrower signature authorization, finalized terms for your borrower's deal, and another form, it's um, right to receive an appraisal. We'll send that over. Just so you know, for borrower signatures authorization and right to receive appraisal, DocuSign or eSign is perfectly fine. It doesn't have to be wet signatures and then scanned. As far as the appraisal and title process is concerned, just sit back. You don't have to order the appraisal. You don't have to order the title work. All we really need for the title work is for you to input the contact information in the web portal. If it's seen through a purchase contract, we can work together through that and I can just submit that. We can get our underwriting to uh, request title. For the appraisal, you're going to need your borrower to um, send you over the executed le lease if it's a refinance transaction and if it's a purchase transaction, an executed purchase contract. I'll also ask you who's the best contact for access, whether that's the borrower, the seller's agent, the buyer's agent, et cetera. Um, but that's really what we'll need from you to get that. Time frame for appraisals right now. Um, we've got a couple of DSERs that we just ordered appraisals for, I, th I believe last Friday and we got the um, appraisals back in on Wednesday. So they're running about five to seven days in total. Mm -hmm. Just so you know, and your borrower may ask you this, we're gonna order an appraisal through an AFC. They're gonna assign the report to an appraiser. Appraiser or vendor is then going to accept it. And at that point, they're gonna call your borrower or call the point of contact for access. They should be in the property within two to three days. That's really depending on their schedule. They, um, submit the report to the appraisal management company, the appraisal management company and make sure the report is in compliance. And then they submit the report back to us. 
Um, throughout the way, we're going to be giving you updates because we get updates on where the appraisal is. If you don't have a member account with us and you'd like to start the process of getting pricing or submitting loans, etc., please sign up on our website. It's gonafcap.com slash sign up. Um, and if you have any questions on, on getting access to that or if you're approved as a broker, I'm happy to check and, and get you approved and get you an account. Moving to the last portion of our topics for today, I just wanted to open it up for a question and answer period. I also just wanted to thank you for being our broker partners. We appreciate working with you, the opportunity to get loans funded and closed and see what we can do and build business relationships.